We are on part four of problem six in the practice exam. Give a reduction from graph coloring to this problem. And if you've been following along previously, this was the obvious problem to do a, redu a reduction from. Uh, because we already saw that we end up coloring star systems in order to get a solution to this. Assume that the GC graph is connected. That's nice. Uh, we don't have to worry about disconnected graphs. If the GC graph were disconnected, uh, we could pretty easily handle that either by doing uh, multiple reductions. Remember, we usually do a single reduction, but we're actually allowed to use the underlying problem any polynomial number of times. Um, so what we could do if, if the graph coloring problem is disconnected is we could, we could grab the uh, connected components and we could separately reduce each one of those to an instance of space class. Alternatively, we could actually very carefully connect them together. If we were really clever about it, we could sort of add in an extra player, um, and then we could have a node that we ensure must be controlled by that extra player, and then we can connect everything else in the graph to, to that node, and all of a sudden the graph becomes connected, but in such a way that it, it sort of behaves as if it's disconnected. Regardless. Very nicely, the problem lets us assume that uh, the, the graph coloring problem is connected. So for this and all subsequent parts, reduction means polynomial time reduction, but you need not show your reduction takes polynomial time. Um, well, now, this is a funny place for this because there aren't any subsequent reductions. Sorry, uh, this was really meant to describe all of the reductions, and then separately you would prove that your reduction took polynomial time, but you'd always know that I meant reduction means polynomial time reduction. Let's put it this way. If on the exam I ask for a reduction, you better have a really, really good reason to assume that I mean any kind of reduction rather than a polynomial time reduction. So uh, that's kind of a summary of the problem. Now let's solve it. We want to reduce graph coloring to this problem. Now you might be really worried here because this problem is actually much more flexible than graph coloring, right? Graph coloring, uh, you've got, you sort of got the players part. That's fine. Each player is a color. So graph coloring gives you K. That's the number of colors. In fact, let's just uh, write out the input. GC input. That's going to be uh, the GC graph. Uh, oops sorry, which is going to be composed of the set of vertices in GC and the set of edges in GC. Uh, and then we're also going to have K in GC. And K in GC is the number of colors we get to use. And we want to figure out, can we color this graph without using the same color for two nodes that are connected by an edge? Um, but we get more than this, right? We also get a uh, maximum empire size, connected empire size, uh, which um, we don't have in graph coloring, right? And in fact, what does that maximum connected empire size mean in graph coloring terms? Like if k is equal to 2, is this just like graph coloring? Here's here's a point where working some examples was really helpful to us. We can actually jump back up and say no. If k is equal to two, this is this is not just like graph coloring, right? If k is equal to two, we can do stuff like have this um, two node connected empire here. This would be illegal in graph coloring because we've colored two neighboring nodes the same, right? So k gives us extra flexibility. Um, that might seem scary going into the reduction, but remember, you're reducing from GC to Space Quest 2. So the fact that Space Quest 2 gives you extra power is not a big deal, as long as you can find a way to limit that power in the reduction, to not use that power, then you're fine. Okay, So we are reducing from GC to Space Quest 2. So we need algorithm one, we need algorithm two. Algorithm two is going to be our usual yes, if and only if yes. Okay, good enough. How about algorithm one? Okay, well, the Space Quest two input is a graph, the Space Quest two graph, which is V Space Quest two comma E Space Quest two. Okay, uh, and also a P, that's the number of players, and a K, this is the empire size limit. Well, that should be it, that should be all we need. 
So the obvious approach here is just to copy the graph, right? But maybe we're going to have to manipulate it in some way like we did for the ham cycle problem previously. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, can we just copy it? Well, if we just copy it, we are going to end up coloring nodes in the Space Quest 2 problem, so that's pretty good. In fact, the number of colors we want is probably k, right? And our colors in this problem are the players. Each player is a color, so the number of players we want to correspond to kgc. It looks like we just want to copy this, right? So what do we do with ksq2? What should that be equal to in order to ensure the constraint in GC that two neighboring nodes cannot have the same color? That's pretty easy, actually. We just set that to 1. If we set this to 1, then we're saying you can't have an initial connected star system larger than size 1. This ought to do it. This ought to be a reduction that works. Now, I'm going to really, really quickly talk through why it works. Uh, the fact that it's polynomial should be super obvious, right? This is this is uh, among the very easiest reductions we've ever done. We copied the entire input and we appended one to it. That's basically all we did. Uh, so clearly that's polynomial. Is it the case that if there's a solution to GC, then there's a solution to the Space Quest II problem and vice versa? Well, yeah. I mean, in this case, the solutions and their constraints really exactly correspond to each other because we set k equal to 1. So if there's a solution to this SQ2 problem where k is equal to 1, then it is a coloring of the graph such that no two neighboring nodes have the same color. So that is a solution to the graph color problem and vice versa. Uh, 